dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end and welcome back you cannot escape it. That is correct. Um, <laughs> those of you just joining in, last time on Missed Opportunities, after um, a long and pretty arduous battle with the Red Death itself, the party ventured deeper into a mansion constructed by um, the... Uh, um, Lord Garnier, who was the chief inventor for this land. Um, they did so on the behest of the chief inventor's daughter who had inherited the house and seemed to know nothing about it. They found a number of traps, scary, spooky things, and illusions within, um, though um, the daughters seemed to pay almost no mind to them. Uh, but the party is adventuring deeper within this mansion, um, in order to seek, um, well, I believe the intention is to seek, uh, perhaps seeing what is at the bottom of it, just to see, and also perhaps to seek, see if there are some answers regarding the um, contraption that is keeping um, the uh, true heir to the land locked up within the Phlegatham Sanitarium. He is, has a contraption stuck to his head keeping him from speaking keeping him from seeing and covering almost the entirety of his face keeping him locked completely prisoner there's also a clockwork type of mechanism to it that whenever he tries to explain a bit too much about his situation blades seem to start to cut into his neck bad situation and the inventor of this thing um lived in this house so maybe the answers are below so after um exploring the upper portions um dealing with the traps and finding some strange contraptions up there including a mechanized butler um the party found a secret stair down deep deep into the deeper parts of the mansion as you descend these stairs mostly hewn from stone the air begins to get more humid the air becomes much hotter as well almost like descending down into a sauna it is uncomfortable especially those of you wearing heavier clothing those of you wearing full armor it just hangs heavy on you and it feels not only hot and humid but stuffy and still as if as when this passage even with this passage being opened there is almost no airflow you smell this slight um putrid scent of brimstone and um the, the sort of distinct scent of char or burning as you descend down the walls seem a bit hot and as you reach what you must assume is the bottom there is a pale blue glow behind a simple wooden door no latch just hinges a simple door and you can see now at this bottom area this landing about um 
it's about 15 feet from you guys to the door. Um, you can see a few metal pipes and such coming out of the walls and extending through the wall that the door is uh, providing access through. So you can see a bit of the mechanism of this house beginning to return where before it was simply cut into solid stone. Um, well, I, I'd like to investigate the door to make sure it's not trapped before we try to go through it. If that's you okay with are everybody. I'll help. Welcome to investigate that... said door. Here, let me put the correct splash art up. Is there any music? Um, yes. There is not, actually. Let me get some going. Feel free to roll that investigation check. Uh, with advantage, because Mariah is assisting, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, because my first roll was a natural one. Uh, Way to start. But my second roll was first a 10 for night. a total of uh, 17. 17. Um, as you saw before, as you... Uh, there's another door sort of like this solid wood with heavy iron bars reinforcing it, um, bolted in a few dozen places, uh, banding all around it, almost like a, a, almost like a barrel, almost like it's been coopered. Um, but it seems there is no latch that you can see. You get down, you look at the bottom under the sill, you look at the side and... Um, with maybe a little boost from someone, you look at the top and you can see a little bit of light coming through at each seam. No latch, no trap, seems innocuous. Well, I think it's safe. Should I open it, guys? You sure you don't want me I'll to open. do it? I'll open the door. Are you sure you want you to do it, Priyan? <laughs> Why not? Would anybody would you look a little ready? peaky? Yeah. How how you feeling, bud? It, it's true. I didn't want to say anything, but you know. I feel drained, but I'm okay. Are you sure? I sweep out my my sort of long coat out of the way and kind of do a little like bow towards the door, like it, it's all yours, dude. <laughs> I will open it. You sure? Oh god. Okay. You I back up <laughs> push the door open and are immediately met with a blast of heat. It makes you wince for a moment, but you realize that it's just the same hot air um, that has been present, just built up a little behind this door. Beyond is a long, long hallway carved from stone but you also see bits of the wall that have crumbled away, revealing odd sort of clockwork mechanism behind the wall. Gears that lie dormant, levers, um, just little bits of what seem like machinery lying beyond the wall. This section of hallway, however, is just simply straight down about 120 feet. Um, there is a pale blue light emanating from cracks in the wall at places that give this dim, uh, this interior dim light. And at the very far end of the corridor, you can see what looks to be another door. It is simply looks like a black rectangle to you from this angle with a brighter orange light shining behind it. Now, along the wall, as Priyan steps in, about 10 feet in and to your left, you see a glowing light that sparks for a bit and then begins to emanate this beautiful, soft, more ocean blue light where the rest is almost a... Um, uh, sort of ghostly cyan. This is just a beautiful royal blue light that shines about 10 feet ahead of you on the left side of the wall. Well, 
What do you think? I'll lean forward and poke my head in. Seems fine. Her head's gone. Okay. I was like... <laughs> oh. Hello? 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 There is no echo, only it, the heat and a bit of a hiss as you can no, see. No, I totally steam do that just as Steam a occasionally... <laughs> coming out from the uh, side of the walls. She um, makes her own echoes. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, the, <laughs> just so you know, this is classified as extreme heat. You think this is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit okay. in here now. So we don't want to be down here for a super long time. Let's uh, keep that in mind. Um... Start walking. I'll uh, I'll take uh, front with Prion to have some super eyes on the floor. Okay. As you move closer, the the blue light begins to grow more intense. And when you get about five feet from it, about fifteen feet down the hall, on the right hand side, you see a purple light. On the right hand side, begin to glow. So blue on the left, purple on the right, orange behind the door at the end of the hall. Is that right? Yes, though the orange is more of just a more ambient light, maybe from fire or something like that. It's less. These are almost um, pure in their coloration. Yeah. Getting closer, you can see within the wall um, stuck into a bit of machinery is a crystal that is glowing this royal blue. So that was when we got about five feet to the blue light that the purple one went up. Mm -hmm. Right? Hey, Priyam, poke the floor in front of the blue one. I will do so. Um, how much you want to bet the next one's going to be green? Yeah, I was... I was wondering i just want to make sure that if i don't if i step in front of this i'm not going to explode but i i do want to test that theory um the as prion you do see um as you're poking down at the ground there um what looks to be maybe a pressure plate but when you're uh about to uh sort of maybe trigger it or something you notice it's decorative it is made of maybe polished brass or something like that. It would be obvious. Um, and there are obvious ways to walk around it. This is not a five by five hallway. This has got about five, 10 or 15 foot berth on either side. There is just simply a pressure plate in front of this blue light. Um, what was the uh, order of colors again? Melvin? Blue, purple, green, orange, white, violet and then eventually black at the very end. Right. I mean, it was 314, so I think that maybe it repeated once as a pattern before you got to black. Interesting. Um, oh. I will gingerly pass by the, um, uh, no, 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 the not pressure plate, pressure plate, and um, walk about 15 feet forward. So as you continue forward, the purple light grows brighter and bl brighter, and then further down on the left, you see a green gem begin to light up. A. Well, I don't I... know what this means, but we know that there's a connection. <laughs> well, it, it seems like Mariah's made this connection already, but I'll say it out loud for the rest of the group just in case. It seems like these lights correspond to the doors in the, ha the hall of the... Um, the hospital where uh, we met oh. whatever his name is Donair Mr. Do Mr. Dominic Brian. Donair so are we are we looking then for the black like door like we wait and go through yeah to go through the door that matches up or do we take the crystal that matches up with his door the what we do with this information is a little unclear misty. yeah yeah 
Um, I'm going to keep moving forward slowly, um, keeping an eye out for anything untoward, but I'm going to keep moving and see if the pattern continues. Um, okay. I would like to cast Mass Healing Word because I'm very nervous and Prion looks not so great. I think, I think that, that um, they've taken a short rest. I don't know yeah. if you guys have been damaged since, right? Yeah. I'm so is anyone... I thought you were... Oh, okay. I thought you were yeah. super low. He had his hit point total reduced. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll sit on that. Yeah. Thank you anyway. <clears throat> so yes, moving forward, you do see as you walk down the hallway what you would assume is the correct order. All following at the very end, a violet light begins to grow and in each front in front of each of these crystals you do see that um um more like a more like a large button than a um you know than a pressure plate or anything um is you said the hall was about a 120 feet long was that mm -hmm. the same length as the hall um in the sanitarium Um, I was wondering that too, actually. <laughs> I don't have that written down from the sanitarium, so I'm not sure you actually gave us that information originally. I don't feel like he gave us the dimensions of what we thought was a random hall. Uh, but, you know, thinking back on it, it, would I think that the dimensions are comparable? A few things. Um, it was probably a third to half of um, the length. Um, on top of that, it, um, the Dominic's cell was at the end of a hall, Yeah. but it, um, most, most of the doors in the hall were also, um, I guess. Well, there, there was a window another. at the actual end of the hall where Dominic's cell was. His was just the last one in the row, right? On a side? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, the door at the very end of the hallway that we're looking at doesn't necessarily match up to where his door was. So there's no black crystal. There's not. Is that correct. Mm. Well, I guess we should check the door then. Hi. I'll, I'll go take a look at it, I guess. I'll help. Um, we'll stand back here. I have a natural 20 with that, so 27 total. Ooh, nice. I've rolled a Kraken. Ooh. Kraken! Kraken. This one, this door, is... Um constructed of solid metal you see a few um, uh, gears and chains evident within its construction it almost looks like a piece of machinery itself um, is this a oh, sorry what was your total on investigation 27 okay you can see that there are some steam pipes in fact that lead into it that seem to be able to power it and with that enormously um successful investigation you see a few valves that can be turned manipulated in order to um, pass the steam in the correct way that will bring it past a number of gears, a number of um, uh, chains, and some sort of uh, belts that will rotate different cogs in order to withdraw a giant deadbolt, um, probably um, nearly, uh, nearly eight inches in diameter that goes right into the wall. <clears throat> you also feel that had you investigated less thoroughly um, turning certain bits would have released the hot steam into your face and whoever was standing around you nice <laughs> I, I think I got it open guys that 
Marathon. I'm a little bit concerned about the size of that deadbolt, though. And what that might mean is behind the door. I think at this point, everything is concerning. So why, why distinguish? Well, I'm especially concerned about that one. Does I it look like there's any damage to the door? <laughs> Um, Melvin, as you look at it, no, it doesn't doesn't seem uh, like it's been damaged or, or broken in any way. It seems to be, uh, uh, aside from taking a little bit of effort to turn some of the wheels, um, it does not um, seem particularly damaged. And it seems fine, yeah. Pushing this one, you can't just use your hand. Uh, you have Mariah, you okay, have to at I'll least put your muscle. shoulder against yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and uh, um, as you feel the um, it's almost like sitting down on patio furniture that's been outside in the sun as you push against it, the, the hot metal begins to sort of heat and almost burn through your clothing as the door gives way. And beyond, you see a strange, strange laboratory. The heat is, again, oppressive here, and it is completely filled with cogs, gears, wrenches, levers, all sorts of mechanized objects, pipes carrying steam, uh, wind their way across the ceiling, um, coming out from the floor in odd places. There are, There is a large workbench across one side of the room, and there is a... Um, what looks to be a construct of some kind. Tall, almost eight or nine feet tall, sort of slumped near a strange object um, that you haven't seen before. A small table with a what looks to be a horn or sort of violet flower shaped metal device coming out from it. What we would think for non and people as some type of gramophone or something. So it's even warmer now in the hallway? outside this door this is very is it's very yeah. hot in here you can see that there is basically an open furnace and um the there's an occasional occasional rumble that emanates through the floor that makes you think that the cons the one who constructed this house perhaps tapped into some type of volcanic or um natural uh heat source that is that you are uncomfortably close to I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a small bit of cloth out of my pouch and um, cast prestidigitation on it in order to cool it to chill the cloth cloth for the next hour um, and sort of drape that around my neck to try to keep myself a little cooler okay you guys have access to fresh water does anyone have water down here uh, I believe I I have do, a yes. canteen, yes. Have holy water and holy water is not probably going to do it because they're the water skin. My water skin, yeah, I've okay. got both. Okay. Water skin. I, I do not. <laughs> so it sounds like some of you will be sharing between water skins. So this first hour you will be fine consecutive hours that you spend down here, you will have to make constitution saving throws as the heat is oppressive. Have I used my whatchamacallit today? Oh, uh -huh. joke. I can't remember. Didn't you make something? Or I feel like I did, but I can't remember what, and now that's going to bother me. Oil. Did you make oil? Yeah. I did. That's what it was. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Hold For Harkin? But it's drinking yes. oil. Drinking on <laughs> That's very unpleasant. Um, peek my head in. Hello? 
Anyone home? Um, you hear just you, um, I think you hear this just the single word echo back from the room eyes, eyes, eyes. I walk inside. <laughs> well, that was creepy. And Everybody out of a sort of eyes. weird residual habit, draw the fake sword that's at my, <laughs> my belt. <laughs> sure. You draw it and um, again, it's just this absolute mess in the corner or near the um, uh, workbench. There are a number of um, what look to be mechanical limbs of some sort it reminds you of the work that you saw in that um puppet upstairs piddlewick mm -hmm. but yeah. on a much much larger scale and uh, a few one of them is laying upon the workbench you see the light flaring from within the um, small furnace in this room you see this sort of hunched over automaton with its back to you, uh, facing the small table with the chair. There is also another door um, leading out. This one, a double door, 10 feet tall, um, made out of solid metal. And as you move into this room, you can hear coming from beyond that door a <laughs> heavy, clangy footsteps on a stone and metal surface. Not necessarily coming towards you, but moving around. And then um, you hear the occasional clang of metal, just in general, coming from beyond there. Did I have any sense of where that voice might have come from? Uh, make a, uh, make a perception check. Twenty-five. Excuse me? Twenty-five. Um, twenty-five. Wow, very nice. Uh, it, you feel like it came from that hunched over creature in the corner that hunched over um, either it's either a suit of armor of some type or maybe a larger version of these sort of automatons that you've seen before. I um, start kind of keep, keeping my back to a wall as best as possible and kind of just gesturing towards everyone else to slowly make their way into the room. I keep my gaze on the automaton just so you know, there's a bunch of us coming in. Let's not make any sudden movements. You hear mostly silence. Yeah. I keep slowly circling around and I want to get to the point where I might be able to see it from a side view rather than just seeing its back. Okay. Um, uh, you hear then um, you kind of go around the corner and you see oddly enough what you think are maybe some sort of bellows or, or rather maybe um, some type of air bladder in it seems to expand for a second on its back it looks almost organic and then you hear have notated the color of the eyes. The color of the eyes have been forgotten. I wish I knew the color of the eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. Would have been evocative. Remember, would have remembered. Should have regretted the eyes. 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 Whose eyes? 
Do you remember the color of the eyes? Who do you remember the color of the eyes? Who is this? 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 Lord Garnier? 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 The Lady Garnier is upstairs. We are her guests. <sighs> and suddenly you hear this sound painful, almost like a combination of tearing of flesh and the grinding of long neglected machinery as this head <gasps> turns around and looks in your direction. You can't help but notice the resemblance in its face to a portrait that you had seen previously. Some of the features are maintained, but now you see in stark clarity that the bellows or the air sac that you saw is but the torso of this inventor that used to be here. Nearly naked, almost half of his body mingled with this strange machine. Somehow his spine has been elongated to bring his head much further up from his shoulders and the rest of the body as it should be. There seemed to be some sort of unnatural system feeding him air. There is but half of his face showing, the other half covered by a mask and a faintly, faintly, faintly glowing eye that looks to be a crystal. Um, it glows with a bit of light as it looks towards you and then grows completely dim, almost um, uh, almost completely dark and clear. And then it, like an incandescent light, winks into um, uh, uh, light again. Um, The documentation was too complex. Should have known documentation too complex. Why? I forgot the eyes. Forgot the eyes. Why did not the eye? Who are you? Who is coming to this place? Not recognized. Not, not recognized. Not seen before. Intruders. We are the guests of the lady of the house. Your granddaughter has come to take up her inheritance. You said the Lady Garnier. Where is the Lady Garnier? You said you've seen her. Tell me about her. Tell me about the Lady Garnier. Tell me. She is gorgeous and dainty <sighs> and upstairs. Her eyes. What color are her eyes? <laughs> David. <laughs> I don't know if I have that in my I don't notes. think I ever wrote that down. <laughs> no. What color are her eyes, DM? Something I, I personally never thought would have thought to write down. Um, they are a light brown color. Yeah. <gasps> Hazel. And um the machine kind of slumps a bit. <sighs> I Cannot verify. Cannot verify. Subject. Host is hmm, too spent. Need energy. Need re-energy. Need re-energy. Need re-energy. Does it look like there is a similar um, charging area in this room? There is one for um, Butler Man upstairs that we saw him get into. Is there something similar in this room? Um, there is not. Um, this seems to be more of uh, uh, the artifice here is a little less refined, a little more experimental, and but you do notice the eye that it has in the socket is um, uh, fairly. Uh. Uh, the, the the light emanating from it is similar t to the um, electrical currents that you saw um, arcing out of certain places, and in fact, um, 
the sort of glow that was experienced when the butler stepped into his place that sort of, I guess, recharged him. Well, while he's um, somewhat incapacitated, I'm going to take a look around for any sort of paper documentation of any kind that's in this room. Diagrams, blueprints, anything like that. Um, okay, yeah, make an investigation check. There is a um, a wealth to look through. Did you say uh, something? What's up, Talisa? Talisa? Talisa. <laughs> Talisa. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm still out in the hallway because this was very strange. Uh, I'm just, what, what's going on? It's really uh, hot in here. What's going on? We've got a robot grandpappy in here. Gra- Grand ropappy. Okay. Yeah. However you want to smush that together. Um, I will. Yeah, he's, uh, coherence is a thing that he seems to be struggling with a little bit, but um, we're working on it. I like, think uh, Melvin's taking a pass around the room. Uh, it's an 18 total. Uh, okay. Um, as you're looking about, you find uh, what looks to be a um, heavy bound book and opening this one up leafing through it. It looks to be a catalog. Um, you look and see things about raw material storages, about um, orders of uh, fuels and different imported items, crystals and whatnot coming in for the purpose of the, uh, constructing these things. Um, and you uh see a couple things um marked as uh sort of crossed out as if they were um removed or moved from their original locations and in a sort of more clumsy script what almost rips the paper um it says in the crystal room. It is... A few things are marked like that. One... You do see is listed as... The Helm. Another being... Um... Uh... Uh, what what is it that uh, uh, um, the lady the helm and the lady did I hear that right yes Inch. you then hear um, this uh, this pounding sound, the sort of metal on wood and footsteps that have been um, pounding around in the room um, adjacent starts to get a little bit louder, and it sounds like a few footsteps approach the door, and then you hear a (laughs) three heavy knocks and a voice booms out We are 80% complete with the upper forearm armaments. That's concerning. And then (laughs) walks away. I very lightly with the tip of my rapier kind of just poke the shoulder of Grandpappy Atonaton. Just to kind of see with whether the, he's going to respond. With the tip of it? <laughs> yeah, just kind of like a, a very gentle, like like this kind of motion. Like a okay. ding, ding, you there? <laughs> it kind of, the, the light in the eye flares up just a little bit. And then it um, um, 
looks to is it a threat is it a threat a salute cannot evaluate is it a threat oh no memory a host has no memory eyes but were the hey Talise how about like a you know a proper little jolt to the battery juices here do I know what okay. a battery is <laughs> <laughs> we can uh, uh, where you adapt. store things usually a battery is like yeah. storing weapons yeah. or yeah. you know um, arsenal so it's like it just is a very small battery you know <laughs> it's yeah yeah storage things oh. Zap him in the heart. How's that? Um, no, no, up DM. here in in the in the eye specifically. I will. I tell was gonna you. say. I was. I will tell you. Uh, sorry. Uh, I guess I was gonna ask if there was anywhere specific, but okay. And uh, let's see. How do I want to do this? Start. Start. I guess gentle, if everybody. Talise. I was. I was gonna say if you wanted maybe get behind me just in case things get a little. Do, do you have like like levels like yeah yeah you no know, like th this is like a little pinprick and then this is you know like a nice little slap and this is a punch to the face ah uh, i have varying levels of 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 slaps like lining everybody up and slapping i can thunder wave how's that So I'm afraid that's going to break all of him, not just... I, I was kind of hoping for a little, like, zzz, zzz, zap, just just, just to the eyeball, kind of. I can try. I can try to channel it through my finger instead of doing, like, a full Fingy. hand, but I can't... A little thingy wave, but I can't promise, but I can try. I promptly okay. go over to the other side of the room where Melvin has been looking at this catalog and say, "Kid, we're gonna stay <laughs> over here, all right?" Uh, okay. I I won't. I'm I'm being honest. <laughs> I appreciate okay. your honesty, girl. It's all right. <laughs> um. Okay. DM. I would like to <laughs> finger channel thunder wave into wait, wait no does thunder it do wave lightning? no electric lightning not thunder thunder wave does it it does a light uh, <laughs> elect ele electric electric slide i know i have one because i did it does thunder wave do extra damage to mm -hmm. does it i don't see anything that says it does or... extra I don't see that. Oh no, it's not Thunder Wave. It's Shatter, I think, that does extra to Constructs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wasn't gonna do Shatter. <laughs> I could. Um, oh, oh yeah, I you... have Call Okay, I do have oh, call, call Lightning, lightning. But it's... Sweet fuck. <laughs> I was like, that's uh, level three. <laughs> um, I, I, I could do a little bit of Lightning if you wanted. This was like, I have I have giant slaps. <laughs> I don't I, I don't I have, have precision. Smaller slaps, if you want. So so. As as the thunder and lightning rages in our sound effects. Let's uh, <laughs> let's timing. start small if we're gonna be trying to tinker with something that no one of us knows how this shit works. Okay, Melvin. I'm allowed to be a little bit pragmatic. Okay. I'm, I'm not arguing. I was just really excited. Okay. Um, in that case, I'll step forward and, um, is there anything else we want to give some electricity to while I'm at it? I get, um, three of these darts. Uh, does it look like there's anything that needs electricity in this room? <laughs> yeah. That's force damage though, isn't it? Magic missile. I'm no, a Order it. of Scribes oh, wizard. Yeah. I can change my leveled spell damage type. That's a really good <laughs> idea. Yeah. Um, so, even with Melvin's investigation, um, this is the only obvious thing. There is a... Um, sort of... Uh, glowing crystal disc that's been set on the sort of gramophone item. This is another thing you think looks like it 
has some sort of magical charge or something to it. But most of this workshop is less, a little more mechanical, a little less arcane. You can see certain elements that are being channeled into uh, different forms of energy, Melvin, but this is really the only obvious. Okay. Um, then I will um, aim cast... the third one into a bottle. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's clever. I like that actually. <laughs> can can I attempt to catch lightning in a bottle, Peter? Would you allow that? <laughs> you can always try. Just, just for fun. Like, <laughs> All right. Does anyone have an empty bottle? I'm sure some one of us has Absolutely. drunk a drank drunken dr at least one of us. Hard disciples are hard. Mariah did some had... damage to a bottle during that short rest, didn't she? <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pull out a, a vial that's for like, I have a vial a chemical too, ingredients or something. And um, I will cast a first level magic missile with uh, lightning damage. Um, let me cast that there. Um... So the first two will go into the eye, um, and then the third will attempt to go into the vial, and I'll try to stop her it and see what happens, just because it's fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why not? Might as well. Uh, so that'll be um, eight points of lightning damage. Like okay. Power. The eye glows with a much brighter sort of cyan energy. Uh, and um, the glass um, shatters. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear this kathump, 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 kathump. Has the master been injured and does it require assistance? Has the master been injured? Does require assistance. Is that the the automaton with the eye? From the other side that's, of the. That's the uh, other door. Oh. That's the eighty percent. Does it look like the automaton is going to respond? It's. You see the eye glowing, and it kind of is straightening the body out, almost like it's in some sort of kind of reboot sequence at the moment. <laughs> Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> um, I'd like to, if I may, cast a minor illusion to make the sound of the auto automaton talking, <laughs> saying that everything's fine. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Can you mimic actual speech with minor illusion, or is it just sounds? Um, if it's the upgraded version, let's find it. out. It can be your uh, create a sound. Its volume can range from whisper to scream. It can be your voice, someone else's voice, a lion's roar, or beating of drums, or any other sound I choose. Hmm. Well, so I believe so. Okay. I will ask for a caster level check here too, because from Absolutely. the cantrip, yep. I believe the leveled spell specifies sentences and such, uh, like actual it? recorded ah. speech. Um, you can do a sound or something, but um, let's see how much, gotcha. how convincingly you can go, uh, uh in the, <laughs> in the, <laughs> in the uh, automatons. Pretty convincingly. Which, that's a twenty-three. Twenty-three. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So. Um, uh, there's this sort of uh, you, you you just make this sound that is like, uh, is the master sure? Ah, mm. resuming construction, and you hear it just goof, 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 goof kind of step away. Now, Stop, kid. this um machine kind of looks about and evaluating whether they are intruders, evaluating 
We're guests of the lady of the house. Cannot be confirmed without memories. Cannot be confirmed. Cannot be confirmed. Last log perhaps contains information. And it reaches down and touches the um, gramophone. And you hear sort of this crackly voice emanate. Alfred, I haven't seen you here in some time. I feel myself falling into the wires again. I am the steam. I am the metal. But I... I forgot, Alfred. I forgot the color of her eyes. I need you to be strong. I need you to offer just a bit of yourself that I may come back. I've taken so much from her. I cannot withdraw any more lest she be gone all the way. I... Her eyes, Alfred, remember. Tell me, please. I... Just a bit of yourself so I can bring her back, please. And her eyes. <coughs> this message has not provided me with clues as to who you are. Evaluating threat, evaluating threat. This one brandishes a weapon. Sorry. I'll resheath it. Apology accepted. Uh, you Fritz? Fritz von Wieck? This one is Fritz, yes. Okay. We are here at the, the part that is of... mostly Fritz is drained. Would you offer some of yourself to bring him back? Process mean? What do you? What exactly does offer yourself mean? Fritz has been alone for some time. Fritz requires others to survive, to finish his work. That could mean a few things. Like that could be, oh, I, I give my um, willing assistance, or. I cut off my hand and hand it to you, or something takes over my body and I lose all autonomy. Like, there's a whole range of what that could mean. The machine looks and then it says, um, it <clears throat> opens a little compartment right where the chest is of uh, the sort of human remains of the creature. And you see there a heart just slowly. It's beating, but it sounds dry, almost like it's pumping air or steam or something. Um, and then there is this reddish glow that emanates from it. And uh, four needles poke out from it. <clears throat> At times they would bring one down. At times, Alfred. At times, others. Some willing, some not. Do you need blood? The last time that the master performed this type of ceremony on a living thing, the response was more akin to, I need you. What do you think, guys? What do you think, guys? <laughs> Where's that dog? Jesus. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I ate something that didn't agree with me. I'm sorry. Um... I, I'm it good sounds the way like I am, it, thanks. Yeah, it sounds like it needs parts rather than, like, resources. In which case we would be giving up organs and not surviving. I'm not sure about that. Mm. The anatomy of this one is sufficient. 
The soul is not. So uh, his. That's worse. So his notes indicate. Whose he eyes? He has drained the lady as much as she dares. Whose eyes are you trying to remember? The one, the lady, the one that matters. Mm. Love it when we play the pronoun game. <laughs> she who fell no. ill. Oh, okay. okay. She who will return when the work is complete. But the work must be complete. Did we see the color of the eyes of the lady of the, uh, for the dance? It turned people to dust. Lady oh. Donair? Yeah. The, no, yeah, the one, the one that was turning people to dust. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the Sandra, lady Donair. Judging, oh, okay. judging people. Sedra. I mean, she was wearing a mask. That had yeah. illusion magic in it. So. Her eyes were, uh, Mariah. When you danced with her, they were kind of weirdly milky white. When you got a glance, you thought maybe milky I'm just white? seeing no. a weird part of her eyes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, th these, as far as you can tell, were just white. Yeah, it was white. He's my milk. best. <laughs> I know that's where I find one too. <laughs> the Lady Garnier is almost gone. He had to draw Wait. from her essence in order to continue the work to save her. His essence uh -huh. is nearly gone. Uh -huh. uh, 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 which Lady yeah. Garnier are you talking about? The, the mom. Or the grandmother? Yeah, the... His lady, mm. I would think. I, Lady Garnier. She was... Mm, mm, remember... Hmm. We have no access to the memory. The Lady Garnier must be saved. Reevaluating. Guests, are you against the work? Are you for the work? What is the work? The work is restoring the Lady Garnier. Where is she? The Crystal Room. Well, where is that? Through the Forge. The are you allies? Are you for the work? Wow, I really don't like committing when I don't know what I'm committing it's, to. Um, it's hard to evaluate a, a work without seeing the state of it. We can't approve or reject something without knowing its status. We can't yes, make a decision without knowing facts. If I do something uh, stupid, you're going to save me, right? Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll try. <laughs> I touch the needles. I don't like that face. <laughs> Mariah, you reach out and uh, as these needles pierce your flesh, you feel almost no pain. They are so fine and so small. And you all see this almost explosion of red that appears oh. from inside the chest of this machine as the heart begins to beat faster and the dry sort of papery flesh seems to moisten and then the um, windy sound almost sounds again like a thum, 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 regular heart. Mariah, your max hit points are reduced by 10. Okay. And you feel <gasps> part of yourself leave into this machine and then suddenly the um, uh, automaton kind of uh, stumbles to the side. Ah, who are you? Ooh, mm, evaluated, I... not for, what is, ah, why did you come? I Where's Alfred? Sort of stumble backward and grab at like the nearest hard surface to steady myself if i have to explain one more time that we are the guest of your god's damn daughter granddaughter jesus i am going to have a hernia <gasps> adelaide yeah she's upstairs upstairs 
What? What color? What color are her eyes? I can't. Light brown, can't. hazel. No. No. Yeah. No, no. It doesn't. It... <sighs> and he kind of runs to the workbench and begins wildly flinging through the notes. I can't remember the eyes any... Uh, 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 you must... Uh, you must show me. Go! The hall. Uh, what are you here for? What are you here for in my home? I look over at Melvin. Have you come to oh. stop it? The, the lady Adelaide hired us to help her catalog her father's inventions. Hmm. There's a personal question as well, but we... That's sort of secondary. So Alfred has died? Yes. Uh, as far as we know. <sighs> Pity. Hmm. Adelaide should have been raised here. She knows nothing of invention. She... She had... Though she had more of her father than her mother, who... Uh, uh, they do not work on me. The... No longer... Too much... Machine. Uh, please... Remind me. And he points to the hallway. Mm. The one that we just came down? Yes. R remind you what? Please let me see her again. I have forgotten. I have forgotten. If you are for the work, you will let me know. Yes, for the work. If you are against the work, then... And we are assuredly not against the work. Just consider us a little slow on the uptake. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Oh, okay. Persuasion. Natural 20 for 27. <laughs> Very good. Boop, 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 boop. It looks... Uh, you gave of yourself that I may give her life again. You are for the work. But I cannot. I must. I, I must remember the... Please. This was built for me to remember, but I am too much gear, too much wire, it no longer affects me. Please. Witness what I built. Does it sound like he wants us to open the double doors? I think that's the thing that's- He's important. pointing towards the hallway that you just came from. Um, I look down the hallway. I see lights, multiple colors, in an order. An order that doesn't only exist here. And you can see him walking and the eye begins to fade of cyan color a bit as he, um, continues to walk. <gasps> no. And he points directly to one of the bright lights. Um, Which color? In fact, yeah. he points towards the um, the purple one down in the corner. What? 
She asked her birthday for... It was fall. She... Uh, Please... Step upon the trigger. Witness what I no longer can. Sure. In, inside hallway. that? Is he looking to do sure. us harm? I'm already down the hallway. <laughs> Ten total. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of sense coming from this creature. Um, it's, it's garbled. There seem to be different thought processes all jumbled about that are fighting for dominance. There's this sort of desperation and fear that comes up that is competing with a strange propensity to try to um, logify things or just work based on pure logic. Like um, sort of the essence of himself stripped of his invention and his um, his his uh, almost weaker or um, or and a bit unhinged which is trying to be balanced by this mechanized creature that he has bound himself to and they're just in sort of in a rhythm that is um, too dissonant to, to really um, be cohesive I'm walking down the hallway and I'm going to go step on the pressure plate in front of the purple light. Okay. Um, as you step, the purple light grows brighter, 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 and brighter. And suddenly you're... As you step on it, you hear a, the um, plate depress and everything disappears around you. You can't see anything. You smell a fall day. You hear nothing either until just the faintest bit of a whoosh rustling of wind and a voice. Um, These ones are perfect, Father. Open your mouth. Taste the perfect. Come on, Daddy. Open your mouth. I open my mouth. Okay. There's this stinging cold sensation for just a moment. Frightens you for a second until you realize it's just the cold back of a spoon. And you taste a bit of a tart but sweet flavor with a sort of um, delicate sauce or something with it and you realize blueberries and cream fresh blueberries and cream cousin got them for my birthday father aren't they delicious and then suddenly you're almost thrown against the back of a wall and you see the purple gem shatter in the wall. That was really weird, guys. Not gonna lie. Are you, are you all right? Are you okay? Yeah. I'm really craving pie now. Mmm, pie. Your kid used to give you blueberries and cream or something? I... It was her favorite food. And you 
see um, the uh, creature sort of lumber back and you hear what sounds to be furious writing on a few pieces of paper as it, uh, as it seems to try to document this or something. Yeah, how, how attached are you to these lights down here? Useless to me. Useless. The center of reason has prevented from fully understanding the illusion. It seems that the understanding that the illusion is what it is has prevented one from fully experiencing it and being overtaken by it. We hope that the same will not be true for the organic matter in your brains. Is there a pressure plate in front of the next light? There are, in front of all of them. In fact, um, is anyone one. else going to try them or is it just going to be Mariah going through all of them? <laughs> I'm curious. Mariah's in a haphazard mood. So if anyone else wants to get in on this shit, I'm happy to offer room. Otherwise, I will uh -huh. just keep throwing myself at it. You go and right there's... ahead. <laughs> and there's my take one. Okay. Um, so purple has been. Um, shattered. Uh, do you, um, what, so would you like to pick the blue one, the green one, the orange one, the white one, or the violet one? Come on, Nene. Yeah. Live a little. I'll, I'll look around and they don't have my color. And I'll gesture towards myself, indicating my black clothes. Violet's aesthetically close enough. Just go for that one. Fine, but if I die, I'm coming for you. And I'll walk towards the violet one. Okay. I'm fucked enough as it is. You're fine. <laughs> as you step on it, your senses go black. And... Um, you see nothing for a moment. And then, as if out of um, the darkest soil imaginable, suddenly grass grows out of the nothingness beneath your feet and around. You find yourself in some type of lawn or a small English garden, hedgerows strewn about. And you see a faceless child, featureless on the face, and hair of a color that is sort of indeterminate to you, wearing a plain white dress that walks up to you and looks up and says, Chase me, daddy. I bet you can't catch me. And it runs off into the hedgerows. Come on. Chase me. The nurse. Oh, I'm going to just. <laughs> I can't tell who's more freaked out, a nurse or Chael. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, I will begin. <laughs> to hesitantly, <laughs> slowly step towards where the creepy voice child has gone. Okay. Um, what, uh, <laughs> are you actually trying to track or follow or um, are you just kind of walking along? It's a combination, <laughs> the comments are killing me. Just a, a combination of I'm just trying to keep track of where she's going and slowly following okay. her. Okay. Um, yeah. Make a uh, make a perception check. It's a dirty twenty. Nice. Um, 
So you follow through um, the hedgerows in this slight little maze made by the um, the flowers and some of the um, bushes and brambles. And it's a little, it's pretty easy to follow. You see this little top of the head, um, the hair. Uh, it's tough to tell what color it is. It just kind of changes every second you see it. Goes around a corner and you can see this child dip around a corner um, as if hiding from you. It's clear to you where it is. I'll slowly walk over and slowly reach my hand over and just tap her in the head. Found you? Um, and then you see uh, the hands reach up and around and grab your wrist and suddenly the faceless head reaches above the hedge. No, I got you. And then after that, the most beautiful child's laughter you've ever heard emanates from the face. Absolutely adorable and heart-wrenching. And uh, it goes on for a bit and then sways the wrist back and forth, the laughter um, of a child playing. And then suddenly it reverts. Let's do it again. I bet you can't catch me next time. And suddenly you are thrown back against the wall and the violet light fades into nothing. Uh, I think I just realized I'm never having kids. <laughs> By the goddess, that was... Did you see weird... Kids with weird voices, Mariah? Um, I didn't see anything uh, so much as hear and uh, taste things. It was very bizarre. I, I had like a human child thing calling me daddy. I'm very concerned. Oh, I heard that too. Oh, I wouldn't call them human, but I, I mean, obviously the perspective is Fritz's. <clears throat> I'll, I'll shake myself and stand up straight and throw my shoulders back and resume my tough demeanor. Right, these are these are memories, <clears throat> of course. And I give her a quick double finger guns and step back onto the next plate, whichever one is right behind me. I don't know what that <laughs> would be. <laughs> um, so it's up to you. You Let's have say blue. blue, green, orange, blue. and white to go. Blue? All right, that's Fritz one down. Um, a similar, again, the world sort of disappears um, around you, and then you just return to where you are now. And you heck, this isn't any different. And you um, look around the corner to your um, um, uh, your friends and then you feel something almost tied around your foot or something you kind of kick and you look down and there's just like one or two strands of long auburn hair uh, at your feet and you, you look up and just placed in the middle of the hall there is a woman in a nightgown seated before an ornate um, mirrored vanity and she is brushing a long 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 um, stream of this auburn hair over her shoulder and some of it's and then kind of um, throwing the few bits that brush out onto the ground and then you see this faceless just blank skin face turn around and look at you and you hear that same voice oops <sighs> but it's just like mother's right and you can see the voice kind of shrug and then 
you see in the reflection an old man similar to the one that you saw in the portrait, but almost invisible. Um, you can see through the reflection itself and see through the skin. And you look as the papery skin just kind of seems to be sagging off the skull, which almost glows from within. The mirror shatters, and then suddenly you are thrown back from your pressure plate, back into the hallway. Next. Don't know what colors are left to me. Uh, green. <laughs> green, you are met with a um, similar scene. A small room. And walking in, you see a woman seated at a piano weird you're almost floating in this vision you can't feel your own footsteps doesn't feel like you're standing on anything you can't smell but you see her in this dress and you can hear the faintest sound of singing along with this melody uh, that she's playing on the piano Beautiful, sort of little haunting melody that she sings to herself playing the piano. You feel like a ghost, barely visible. And then you are thrown out of the peace of this moment and back into the hot, hot, all. I try to store away as much of that melody as I can quickly before it goes away, kind of repeating it to myself several times very faintly under my breath as I walk towards the next pressure plate. Okay. Good green. Um, next, I guess, would be orange. As you step upon orange, your vision goes completely blurry. You can barely see the hand in front of your face. You see this bright glowing orange light everywhere. Um, you wince and blink against it, and for a few moments you see really nothing. And before a woman with a cowl and no face stands before you and slowly reaches out a hand towards your eyes, almost in slow motion. Do you do anything to stop it by chance? Try to reach up and grab at her hand. Um, you, uh, as you do, uh, you see that the hand sort of oh, recoil. Um, Please, Father, allow me. And a cold, almost ghastly hand tries to peel your own hand away before reaching uh, further towards your eyes. No. All right. Your sight grows dark and the cold, cold hands reach the sides of your temples. And suddenly, two circles of clear vision appear, slightly clouded, like two discs that you can see the world through the way it should be. They're removed for a moment, and you hear a bit of rustling, as if she's... Um, moving some of the folds of her dress or the fabric and then 
the two orbs come back in the cold hands as two circles of glass are placed around each of your eyes and suddenly the world is clear again and you simply see this faceless woman standing in front of you and then the heat um, of the hall returns as in that last moment as i sort of sense myself being sucked back um I, her hands, you describe them as being cold. Do her hands look normal? Can I see her hands before I leave? Um, yes, so as you look down, um, they are, um, uh, um, soft, that, well, they look soft, they feel soft. They're cold, um, but uh, not un, um, unnatural in any way. Uh, her flesh looks, I mean, there, there are some slight, ever so slight calluses to the tips of her fingers, maybe from doing some type of work or whatever. Um, not necessarily what you would expect from a noble, but um, no, they look like normal hands, just cold. Okay. And then um, last pressure plate? White? Mm-hmm. I believe white is the last one, and as you step on it, a similar um woman appears at your side. She's dressed in a white flowing gown, surpassing beauty. Her face is strange, sort of like the rest. This time not blank though. It's like her face is covered in a mass of flower petals. From this confluence of petals, a strange voice emanates. He's a good man, father, I promise. And she plucks a flower from a bouquet holding in her left hand and hands it to you. The smell is absolutely beautiful. The way you perceive it feels almost more like an emotion than simply a scent. I should know. I was raised by the best. And... Um, you feel a little bit of a squeeze on your left arm and then vanishes. What's everyone else been up to while well, I've been taking a little uh, field trip down memory lane? <laughs> I'm staring at you because this is weird. Mm hmm. Nerys is just watching, I'm making sure nothing's coming in here to murder us, but uh, I'm just like... As I watch you step on all these little platforms. Yeah, I'm just on guard. I've been looking through any paper that I can get my hands on, trying to figure out what he's been working on and see if there's any diagrams I could find, stuff like that. Okay. Coming out of that last memory, I'll head back towards the laboratory. Hey, Fritz. Would it be accurate? It is considered to say a disrespectful he... way to uh, to address a lord by his first name. Do not. But we should not be concerned about that. They are protecting the work. They are. What? what? Did you learn? Where is she? What? Did you. The lights are gone. Did you see? I saw many things. Tell She's your me. daughter. Your daughter is the most important person to you. Ah. Your daughter's. preservation is the most important thing to you. Uh, the work. The work. The work. I, I can't see her. It's 
I can't see her. Even in your memories, you can't see her. No. Please, tell me. What did you see? I... saw enough to know that she must have been beautiful. That she had long amber hair like her mother's. Look towards Nene, kind of questioning, like, did you see anything that would help? Just, just like a white dress. What did she do? Uh, and I'll, I'll tense up and, uh, she, she, she was running through, um, across the grass and wanting him to chase her and hiding behind a hedge. She liked to play. She's spirited. Yeah. She trusts her father and trusts the way that he raised her. She's a good musician. And I will sort of lightly sing back the little melody that I heard. Okay. <sighs> yes. Anything else? <laughs> Did you teach her how to make inventions? We tinkered some, yes, we did. I remember. Oh. Um. I, d I do. Ah, I see, I see her. Um, based on the ones that you've indicated for that. You mentioned the blueberries and cream, the hair. Um, unless there's something you else you would like to add, it seems like his brain is trying to put all of this together. Um, mm -hmm. But um, a anyone is welcome to help, though it's mostly just Mariah and Anaris who have experienced these things. So in trying to, I guess, jog his memory, is there anything anyone else would like to do? Or um, we will end up doing a skill check roll here for those who are um, doing the main convincing. Yes, Melvin. I'll walk back down the uh, hallway toward the elevator that we took okay. to get down here. Um, and then I'm going to cast, cast a message up the elevator shaft back toward where Adelaide is and see okay. if I can reach her with the 120 foot range. Yeah, I'll I, say you can you can you can reach her. And I'll just say um Adelaide, uh, what color were your mother's eyes? Do you remember? You can reply to this message. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, uh hello uh Archmage. Uh this is a strange question. Um, uh, she had uh, um, a very light green eyes. Ah. I'll cast it again. Ah. Thank you. Then I'll walk back down the hallway. <laughs> um, so <he> practical. <laughs> y y your daughter's eyes were light green. That's right. 
Um, and as you are putting this all together, Mariah, describing this, singing, doing everything, please make a uh, performance check. Oh, I didn't mean to do that advantage, but I got a natural 20 anyway, so it's 20. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see um, a tear sort of form, which quickly is absorbed by this leathery cheek. Ah. <sighs> And then the, he kind of stands up and quickly moves over to the large double door, throwing it open and revealing what seems to be an enormous forge. There is a 15 foot tall giant um, creature construct that looks kind of like Piddlewick, but is 15 feet tall. Oh my God, my worst just nightmare. looming above everything and its eyes <laughs> go towards the door. There are some smaller creatures, sort of like the butler going about hammering steel, uh, shaping pieces of metal and um, working with different materials and they all turn their head towards you as well. And um, Fritz von Wierk says, they are here for the work. And all the heads just go back to what they are doing. Let me take a little, uh, peeky-poo walk-in. Um. Yes. Anything. Anywhere. You. Can any of you draw? Uh, passively. <laughs> or. Bit. I, I'm a decent cartographer. Does that count? I don't know. You are able to pass into the crystal room where we cannot go. It, um, he looks towards you, Mariah. She ensured the Duchess ensured we would be destroyed if we went there. Your sword, you, your armors, ah, will be destroyed no in this place. Okay. Leave them. So, okay. So, I mean, I will so, divest of any metal on my person. Okay. Um, put it in a little bundle. Um, I, uh, out of an abundance of um, caution, I leave my violin and its case with that, and I will take in my small uh, drum instead of my violin. I'll put my uh, pen knife in. <laughs> so that's pretty much the only metal I carry around. Gotcha. And you'll look towards the rest of you that are armored and say, it is up to you, but... I'm not carrying or wearing any armor, so I'm alright. No, I thought I you guys went and got your armor, but yeah, yeah I did. Uh, uh, I set my armor off. Yeah, I was like, I'm like entirely metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just being sarcastic. Dang it. Uh, yeah, I'd take Ugh. off all my armor. It takes about ten minutes. I don't okay. like doing this. I'll take all of mine off and I'll leave my it's weapon be a good here. Time. So I can. I can keep my shield because that's wood, but I have to get rid of everything else. Okay. Okay. Yes, a wooden shield seems Literally to be fine. Okay. 
it, as long as it doesn't have like nails in it or anything. Bolts to hold the straps on or anything. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Really good glue. <laughs> <laughs> It's glue. It's strong stuff. Hmm. So There's, is the entrance to the crystal room indicated to us? There are two other um, halls, or two other um, doorways out of this forge, and he indicates one that you see is solid stone. Um, pushing it open requires some effort. This, the door grinds open. He assures you there will be no traps, but he also says that none of them have been in there for nearly a decade. Um, and the um, stone door shuts behind you, and then a second set of stone doors lies ahead. And as those push open, it reveals a room lit by warm, sort of golden glowing um, crystalline-like structures. This is just, this art is not necessarily super indicative of it, but um, it is completely marble and wood. There is no metal that you see anywhere within here. There are um, occasionally these glass crystals that light the room. There is a um, landing that goes um, back be <laughs> whoops uh, <laughs> back <laughs> behind um, this uh, what looks to be a giant crystal vase and floating in some type of clear liquid you see the body of a woman. Next to it is a half-finished portrait that looks like this. It seems to, the last bits of it seem to have been um, hastily completed. There is dust heavy on the ground, heavy in the air, and as you enter, you see about four, five, six bug-like creatures with antenna waving around in the air, just sort of slowly moving as if awakening from um, some type of hibernation. Yeah, gross. These the long hell? antenna Large start to come towards you, waving around in the air. before sort of slowly backing away and resuming their inert form. Uh, step forward and look towards the... That's what natural yeah, 20s yeah, get you, yeah. so... <laughs> uh, we know what's up. Um, I start walking towards the container with the woman's body and the portrait. Yeah. There are some tubes that leave... Um, that look to um, sort of maybe transfer this fluid back to maybe some other area, like it's being cycled through, and she's just floating inert, looking to be preserved, looking to be dead, but <laughs> not um, but not really decomposed. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, what words did you ask, Delina? I, you said well, you were moving forward. And, yeah, I walked towards then. that. Yeah. yeah, so that is what you see. You also see there are a few um, tables, some cabinets, um, what look to be um, like a, another chest or two um, scattered about. Want to take a swing around, Melvin, see if you find anything? Yeah, I guess. Um, I'll, I'll take a look around. Okay. Um, there are no threats in here with the time just taking based on um, yeah. your base intelligence and passive investigation. There is um, 
there are some interesting schematics. One of them provides an explanation into that um, weird item upstairs that seemed to be some sort of metal tube um, with a wooden handle on it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> One appears to be an intricate diagram and an attached glass key for a um, that uh, describes the process by which one can open the helm. <laughs> and there are stacks of documents that describe um, uh, various other um, bits and pieces about the house, as well as one uh, talking about a particularly interesting bit of um, uh, workmanship within Piddlewick the second that could potentially be removed and used. Um, he said that uh, was the one um, he tried to reapply it to restore this little creature having um, not really found the correct way to do it. Um, it also talks about Piddlewick itself having been brought to him by an old, old mage, slightly crazed, um, as an example of uh, um, excellent workmanship. He was unable to um, restore it to what it was. However, the mage believed it to be good luck or good luck inducing, but uh, Fritz von Wirk assumed it had um, more practical and logical applications. So um, there is a bit about how to extract the clockwork prediction mechanism from Piddlewick II. Interesting. Uh, I assume, well, Melvin would be the one to have this thought and confirm this, but the uh, the key and the instructions for the helm look pr like they would perhaps match up to something that... Yes, um, I was going to say that I would like to take the schematics for the tube with the wooden handle and then the diagram and key for the helm and I'll also take the description of the uh, Piddlewick mechanism. Okay. I'll put all of those into my my bag. Cool. Um, you will have no resistance getting back out of here as all of the mechanisms and all of the creatures are under the um, control of Fritz. And though he does seem a little bit strange still and slightly unhinged, um, your description um, of uh, uh, the um, who you now the, actually the, the portrait is titled Corinne Lady Garnier um, which is what her name was so your description of Corinne um, greatly calms his mind and you can see him frantically um, beginning to um build some little mechanisms, um, taking crystals, and it seems like he's sort of repeating this process, creating things that he can remember her by, that can recreate um, moments that seem to have been awakened again in his memory. And you can hear him sort of mumbling and going about and saying, first to remember, then to the work. First to remember, then to the work. I'll bring you back, Corinne, I'll bring you back. Um, my lord, I'll say as we're kind of heading back out of this room and passing through the forge. Oh, you, what? Uh, yes, what? Um, do you consider yourself still to be the lord of the house? Or has that responsibility passed on? closes his eyes for a long moment and then opens them again. No. 
I am... I am simply here. I am not... It's better that all think me dead. So I can focus. So you don't want Adelaide to know? She should know. Lest she, she stumble know. upon things dangerous. I should teach her these things. I should have taught her a lot more longer ago. Perhaps she can help. I will make sure to update her accordingly. Good, good. And he turns around and begins tinkering at his workbench again. And I think this is where we're all just gonna back out of here real fast. Let's go. <laughs> Down the hall okay. to the elevator. Right. Like. <laughs> okay. Yep. And the uh, exit sign? it's go. actually, it's stairs, just whoop, whoop, up many flights oh. of stairs. <laughs> the air cools once again. Oh, thank and God. you find yourself in the still mechanized, but not quite as oppressive mansion of uh, is she where we Alfred left her? Lord Garnier. Excuse me? Is Adelaide where we left her? Yeah, she's just sitting, um, messing with the doll and sipping on what looks to be her third or fourth glass of wine up in the um, uh, receiving room. Um, Girl after my own heart. Um, Milady, uh, we have news. Oh, you were gone for a while. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Uh, I I'm will turn to the archmage. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to okay. tug on Mara's yeah. the sleeve momentarily. Um, it, we want to get that that tube. Remember? Yes. Um. Well, I think first and foremost, I will allay any uh, concern about your ownership of the property. It is definitely yours. You are the Lady Garnier. You don't need to worry about any previous lords still having ownership. You, you, you said that if your grandfather was downstairs, you weren't sure if, you know, it was still his house or whether it was your house, it's your house. This is good. So, g Grandpa's okay? Uh, Mariah kind of like just tries to start a sentence a couple times. Your grandfather has um, uh, replaced much of his body with mechanical inventions. He's more machine now than man. Is this a Neverwinter no. joke? No, I wish. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> um. So your your grandfather was an inventor. The butler is evidence of this. Your father learned some of those skills. You know, he is an inventor. Um, and it seems that over some period of time, presumably as your grandfather's health started to decline in his maybe older age, that they started replacing parts of his body. And, um, I mean, he's still there, but he's really more, more like, um, Harkin than he is, you know, like you or me or any of the rest of us. But the house is mine. The house is yours. And he, he assures you of that. He just wants to be downstairs and to be able to continue his work. Um, and doesn't really want much to be bothered, although I think he would welcome the opportunity to explain his work to you if you so desired but otherwise i think he won't come upstairs oh, i suppose i could find the time um maybe he'll fix piddlewick maybe um yeah um we actually we were wondering um since we've sort of taken the opportunity to make sure that everything is fine and there aren't going to be any problems between you and your inheritance here. Um, 
we were wondering whether you would be willing to um, do us a kindness. Uh, there are a couple things here that we would be interested in taking a look at and that would aid us in our future endeavors. There are many dangers before us in our journeys and it would be most gracious of a lady of your standing to help ensure that we make it through all of those things alive. Sort of like a sponsorship. Indeed. Hmm. Make a persuasion check. (laughs) See if you just roll a third natural 20 tonight. That'd be really hilarious. 22. That's still pretty good. (laughs) What exactly is it that you need? Um, There were a couple items that we found um, descriptions of downstairs um, that we would like to take a look at. Uh, There is a tube with a wooden handle. We we, we actually saw it up here earlier tonight. Oh, is it in the glass case? In the display case, It's ugly, isn't it? It is, but there might be some usage for it. And since it doesn't really go with the decor, we'd be happy to remove it from the landscape. Hmm. Uh, well, is it valuable? Not monetarily. Academically, yes. It, it, it is qu- it's a quite an interesting piece, but not many people would pay for it, unfortunately. Well, in that case, I will... I will, um... I will donate it to your wizard's tower and so that you and your pupils can um, learn from it. Um, consider it an endowment from the, from the, uh, uh, from the Mance Garnier. That is a very generous of you, Lady Garnier. Thank you. Um, we also wonder, actually, uh, b- before I go on, I want to make sure I understand, um, DM, the item that is hidden within Piddlewick, is that the Piddlewick that she's holding or the other yes. Piddlewick? Okay. Um, we wonder, actually, whether we might examine your dear Piddlewick briefly. Uh, there is information downstairs to suggest that your grandfather um, hid something within the creature. Oh, um, she kind of looks at the back where that's kind of open and then hands it to uh, Melvin. And I'll, I'll pull out the uh, the diagram and take a look, compare okay. it. Yeah, there's a, um, a piece, sort of modular, that you should be able to pull out with just uh, maybe a minute or two of work. Okay. I will. Um, she'll allow so. you to do it um, as well. What is. What is you're not taking part of no. is he I, still I, going to work it, I, I believe so yes it it's not really clear from the diagram which is why I wanted to take a closer look whether that this was a piece of Piddlewick originally or whether it was added after the fact um, by by your your grandfather uh, Melvin as you're looking at it it looks not original mm-hmm. like it was maybe an attempted repair or um, maybe, or maybe something was just hidden in there. Um, it doesn't seem to really match up. You don't know why this would this thing would be in there. So, and is is there any description of what it might do in this diagram? Um, no. It's kind of just labeled as a thing. Uh, well, yes. This this definitely does not match the original workmanship. Uh, it is, it is not part of the original doll. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it does yet. I need to examine it a bit more closely, spend a little bit of time with it to understand it. But it does not seem to be an original piece. Well, may I have it back then, the rest of him? Oh, absolutely, yes. And she kind of reaches back. her hands out. And as you bring them forward, Melvin, you hear this tick, 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 tick sound kind of in your ear and you feel the bit that you took out of it vibrating against your hand and as you suddenly are going to place it in your hand suddenly everything freezes for a second and you hear a tick 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 
and you're moving and as you just kind of uh, continue to set Piddlewick down and then you hear the tick, 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 and then ooh, suddenly time resumes. Oh, that's fucking nuts. Interesting. <laughs> Piddlewick. Thank you. She kind of walks away. Uh, Melvin, with a little bit of work, this functions as a clockwork amulet. Nice. I was wondering. Okay, great. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> um, Oh, I also found this. And she, uh, um, pulls out, um, some large tubes of paper, um, in a strange little compartment in the study, and she spreads one across a workbench. Look at this. You you came on a boat, right? Yes, we did. I think, well, you could take these, see if um, any of these might be of, uh, be of use to you. And they seem to be um, uh, schematics for two different legendary ship upgrades, which we will get to a bit Ooh. later. Pretty book. I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, someone's got to do it. <laughs> my lady, I think I speak for all of us. Um, my uh, liege included, I will gesture towards the Queen of Darkness. Um, when I say that it has been an honor and a pleasure to help you this evening. And we will continue to look back fondly on our experience in the House of Garnier. Well, you are always welcome here. Um, you are always going to be a friend of House Garnier and um, perhaps tea in the garden one of these days. Um, the I'll have to get the rest of this cleaned up a bit before I host you inside. I hope you understand. Uh, of course. Good. Well, um, goodness, the sun's coming up. Uh, I will, uh, uh, thank you, Archmage. Thank you, Queen of the Underdark, and, um, Prion, and, um, you know, you. Thank you, thank you, Queen, and thank you, Archmage, for your help. It has been my <laughs> honor. And she just kind of turns around and bids you guys leave. <laughs> it's so annoying. Uh, we'll, we'll go retrieve that that tube with the handle yep. first. Of course. Before we yep. leave. The stuff, you guys can get all that stuff on your way out. Sounds good. Tube. Having tube. done it. Um, and uh, as morning dawns, um, it is morning, strangely enough. It's been a long, oh, long night for you guys, having attended the ball having been to this um, a gentle oddly beautiful morning um, begins to arise in um, the city of Dementlia so um, yeah I think uh, so to those of you watching our dear audience um, I don't know how you all feel, but a lot of us are worn ragged preparing for, uh, a lot of us are having company, doing Thanksgiving prep, doing a lot of things and having some crazy, crazy pre-holiday weeks. So um, that is where we are going to bid adieu for this evening.